a controversial debate from earlier in the day. It's 13 years since the Liberal Democrats last contemplated the cannabis law. Then, a move to legalize the drug fell to the casting vote of the chair. But the times, of course, are constantly a-changing, and so today supporters of reform tried again, arguing for a motion to decriminalize the use and sale of the drug. I'd like to begin by saying that it's not out of any desire to promote the long wearing of long hair, wearing of caftans, and eating of more lentil dal that I propose this motion. To, to begin with, I'm far too young to remember Rothsey. I would have been 10 at the time. This motion has been proposed because the present law prohibiting the use and sale of cannabis is a liberal, ineffective, and highly wasteful of resources. If that wasn't bad enough, it's also extremely subversive of respect for the institutions of law and order in our society. Now, I say the law is a liberal. The law is a liberal because it prescribes a substance that's harmless to the user at normal dosages and certainly does no harm to anybody else. It's a classic victimless crime. Although medical evidence does, does show that cannabis can be, high, can be harmful at very high dosages, it is by no means certain that total prohibition will solve that problem. There is no evidence at all that cannabis is addictive. It has been estimated that there are tens of thousands of regular cannabis users in Scotland today, and that hundreds of thousands of people have experimented with it in the past. Research by Mori shows that half of cannabis users are under 25, and, tw and they are twice as likely to come from social classes A, B, C, 1. In fact, they sound like Liberal Democrat voters. In fact, it's no longer possible to tell who is a cannabis smoker from the way people behave, if it ever was. The law criminalizes a wide range of people, people such as the President of the United States, a large number of young people, a significant number of people in this hall, because they told me, and also, I suspect, others. The law also makes criminals of the owners of the buildings in which the cannabis is smoked, and the fellow residents of shared hats and flats and, and houses in which it is smoked. So not only does it criminalize people for, for a meaningless crime, it's also ineffective. The very fact the number of convictions for cannabis possession and supply has grown consistently for the past two decades implies a failure on behalf of the police and law and order to deal with this, quote, problem. Prohibition also makes it very easy for people to graduate from cannabis to hard drugs. This is because cannabis is only obtainable from illegal sources, and those dealers may also be suppliers of cocaine, heroin, and other dangerous substances. If a user of cannabis wishes to, to experiment with hard drugs, it is made all the easier because the potential supplier may well be the same supplier for their cannabis. If cannabis was obtainable legally, the opportunity to buy hard drugs from the same person would no longer exist, and graduation to hard drugs made even more difficult. This would also help to reduce the public health problems from heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, and other dangerous hard drugs. 80 to 90% of all drugs arrests are for cannabis-related offenses, so a considerable amount of police time and resources are wasted processing these. This can only be to the detriment to the fight against the dramatic increase in crime of all sorts across Scotland, in particular the violent crime against the person we've been hearing so much about recently. Prohibition of cannabis must also give opportunities to organize crime, which can of course operate without paying taxes to the Treasury or having their product checked for quality and safety. Prohibition did not work in the United States in the 1920s for alcohol, and I see no reason why we should continue to pretend it works for cannabis in Scotland today. The law in this case is an ass. It fails to protect people from a victimless crime, and it may well make the problem of hard drugs worse by making graduation onto them easier. The law wastes police time and resources. It does nothing to make our streets safer. It's also a very subversive law. This is because it succeeds in introducing many young people to the law in entirely the wrong way. Perhaps by sending 15 policemen into a party at 2 o'clock in the morning, complaining about their consumption of a substance that they see as harming no one. They are unlikely to trust the police after such an event, and may even acquire a criminal record that blights their future career and life. Now, the other question, of course, is how we would implement any change in the law. Now, I'd hope that if this motion was passed, it would be possible to develop detailed proposals for the mechanism of decriminalization. Naturally, some form of legal control would remain to protect quality and also to prevent cannabis being sold to juveniles. In addition, the opportunity could be taken to tax cannabis in the same way as tobacco and alcohol. Surely, it would be better if Norman Lamont, in his budget, 
could have raised revenues from cannabis sales rather than taxing the heating and lighting of old age pensioners across northern Scotland. A legal cannabis industry would be easier to control and would ensure that graduation, was not po graduation to hard drugs was not possible. Just like it's not particularly easy to move from alcohol and tobacco to heroin, it would be just as difficult to move from alcohol and tobacco to heroin and cannabis to heroin if cannabis was legalised. The law needs to be changed. I believe the Scottish Liberal Democrats should make, take a stand in calling for the repeal of this anachronistic piece of social control legislation. I commend it to the conference.